In the vast history of YouTube, there have been many who have sabotaged themselves on the road to fame. However, what happens when that self-sabotage not only destroys one's career, but also their relationships with their significant other and families? Today, I, Zeepsterd, will be exploring various YouTubers who have committed adultery and have otherwise destroyed their careers with their unfaithfulness. Some are worse than others, and some are more subject to debate. These are the cheating degenerates of YouTube. Be sure to subscribe and like. Let's get started. Shay Carl. Let's start with someone who used to be a YouTube god. Shay Carl collectively had over 6 million subscribers over three separate YouTube channels that pioneered the vlogging scene on YouTube. In the early days of YouTube, Philip DeFranco gave Shay Carl a shout out, resulting in him getting early success. By the late 2000s to early 2010s, Shay Carl had established the Shaytard YouTube channel, even winning the Best YouTube Channel and Personality Award at the Open Web Awards. Shay's YouTube videos mainly consisted of him hanging out with his family. Being married with his wife since January of 2003, Shay and his wife Colette ended up having five kids together. Together, they would vlog every day of their lives for years. And I gotta be honest, back in early 2010, late 2000s, I was a viewer of Shaytard. Dude, this was my jam. I would get home from like 5th or 6th grade, throw my backpack on the couch, log on to the computer and just get completely enamored by this family. I mean, now looking back, the content hasn't aged too terribly well and I would never watch it now, but something about the family dynamic really connected with audiences. There was something relatable about Shay Carl and crew, and for viewers who would watch them every day, it almost seemed as if you were put in a relationship with a YouTuber. I mean, this was the beginning of what people like to call now the parasocial relationship. I mean, instead of it being Dream, it was this guy. Shay's success knew no bounds, eventually moving to Los Angeles in 2009 to form the company Maker Studios alongside other YouTubers. Maker Studios became so big that it ended up passing Machinima to become the number one independent YouTube network on the entire website. In 2014, Maker Studios was acquired by Disney Entertainment for $500 million. You know, by the mid-2010s, it wasn't looking bad for Shay. He was pretty successful. A loving family, a booming YouTube channel, and company? I mean, what could go wrong? Well, in February of 2017, things began to go on a downward spiral. Earlier today, uh, Nina, a cam girl on Twitter, posted some DMs between her and Shay Carl. And I got a DM from... Shay and I was basically just freaking out. I'm like, oh my god, Shay Carl messaged me. Anyways, he went on to then get very sexual and then he became really rude. And last night he was just super, super rude to me, so I decided to post all of the DMs. In 2017, the Shay Tart family announced they would stop making YouTube videos indefinitely, with the primary reason being Shay entering rehabilitation for alcohol abuse. In the same year, Keemstar uploaded a video in which it was revealed with evidence that Shay Carl had sent lewd messages to another woman on Twitter. The messages sent were extremely explicit, which had audiences changing their perception of Shay. A couple months later, Shay Carl apologized for what he did via YouTube video and where he broke down. I want to say I'm sorry to my wife, my kids, my family. In the immediate aftermath, Shay Carl lost respect from multiple peers and from millions of fans. In the years that had followed, his major YouTube channels have lost viewership significantly. This has coincided with the death of family vlogging channels. However, I think the saddest part of this all came from Shay Carl's actual wife, who had to react to all of this, in which she accepted that after everything that has happened, she's had to accept that her dream has died. Despite the estrangement, the Shaytards have persisted, and where it seems as if Colette and Shay have been working on their marriage and have been trying to move forward from this. Although tragic, I wish them luck in mending their family. Tabuscus. Oh. My. God. Tabuscus. You know, as a YouTuber myself, I can realize that we all have an expiration date. An expiration date that can come if one is unable to change alongside the landscape of YouTube. I mean, this job of being an online content creator on this website is still entirely new. Who knows what the future has in store for creators like me, or even those who are aspiring to be a content creator. Personally, I think it's very possible to keep your fame lit, to not let that candle die, but perhaps what leads to a creator to their biggest downfall is the individual themselves. 
I mean, what can I say about Tobuscus that you don't already know about? He made Nugget and a Biscuit. He made Minecraft videos. He made literal trailer videos in which he sang alongside the trailer. People loved him at conventions. People found him hilarious. In the early 2010s, he had the world in his hands. At least, I thought he did in my 11 year old mind because I absolutely loved this guy. And many others did as well who also grew up beside me. However, the problem for Toby was, we grew up. His audience started to dwindle by the mid-2010s. Toby could not move beyond the early 2010s humor, and still relied on playing Minecraft videos, you know, back when Minecraft was dying, alongside just not updating the type of personality that he was, or even changing up his content. You know, at least he was trying to venture into other venues to keep his relevance. For one, he appeared in the annoying Orange TV show, if you guys even remember that, and he was actually going to appear in a Marvel Kids TV show as well. All that was supposed to happen until accusations came about. A person I dated a few years ago has just made some extremely serious, false accusations about me. Now I debated whether or not to include this, because these accusations aren't confirmed, but in the end I chose to do so to ask you, the viewer, what you think. So here's the thing we know about Tobuscus, he played up this character, something he would often do by doing a funny little voice. Problem was, at the time, we had no idea who he really was outside of that personality. I mean, yeah, he'd go to conventions, but he'd still play up that character with that funny little voice. Who was Toby Turner really beyond a Nugget and a Biscuit song and a couple funny literal trailers? Now I'm saying this as if I have the answer, and this is an answer I don't have. On April 8th, 2016, April Fletcher, Tobuscus' ex-girlfriend, posted on Tumblr various accusations that accused Toby of being a cheater, an abuser, and a racist. A claim was made was that Toby had drugged her and then assaulted her then after. The following story was then subsequently covered by Keemstar, exploding the news even more on YouTube. Soon after, multiple other women, who claimed to have been in contact with Tobuscus, also accused Tobuscus of many wrongdoings. All of them pictured Toby as this raging abusive lunatic, who was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Tobuscus would confirm that he partied hard in his 20s, but would outright deny the most serious allegations against him. Here's the thing, I've never met Tobuscus, I don't know the guy personally, and I don't know how he is behind the scenes. After the allegations were thrown at him, Tobuscus went on a long hiatus. He came back to dwindling numbers on all of his videos. Tobuscus has been consumed by these allegations, whether true or not, it comes at the forefront whenever people mention Tobuscus. When it comes to Toby finding other line of work besides content creation, I can only believe that it's fairly difficult with such accusations surrounding his name. I believe at this point this is really all he has. Despite this, it is very likely that he made a lot of money during his peak career, and that he'll probably be just fine, especially because he could upload whatever he wants. And although they don't get a lot of views, they prove to still be somewhat interesting. Yeah, remember how I talked about that we don't really know the real Toby? Well, I guess he really embraced his persona into his real life? Because when it comes to things like meeting Kyle Rittenhouse, he tends to have fun with it while also doing the little voice, like what's going on here? And this kid in this age where we were raised on video games goes out there. He's like, you know what? I'm going to go on a mission and I'm going to help people better than the better than the alternative. I'm going to go on a mission and I'm going to loot Walmart and then I'm going to burn it down. And then I'm going to burn down the building next to it. And then I'm going to beat up an old lady. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to, and then, and then I'm going to. Whether you viewed the claims with credibility, yes or no, that's really up to you. But as for Toby, he's living his life. That's for certain. Ned Fulmer. In 2014, then employees of the BuzzFeed company, Ned Fulmer, Eugene Lee Yang, Keith Habersberger, Zach Kornfeld, created the video Guys Try Ladies Underwear for the first time, spawning off the Try Guys series. Over time, the Try Guys would end up becoming one of the biggest shows on the entire YouTube channel. Personally, the Try Guys wasn't for me. Every now and then I'd watch a video out of curiosity whenever they'd eat, like, the entire menu of a certain fast food chain, which provided only really mild entertainment. In April of 2018, the Try Guys got so big that they quit their jobs at BuzzFeed, debuting their own company, alongside their very own YouTube channel, simply titled The Try Guys. Each one of them had their own personal quirks and inside jokes, with one of Ned's most prominent jokes being him mentioning that he had a wife. You know, similar to the bull rat meme. My wife. 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 Much of the Try Guys' success could be evident on their chemistry with each other. 
spearheading them to nearly 8 million subscribers. Jesus, I had no idea they were that huge. You know, with such meteoric success, you'd probably like to try and not screw it up, especially since you're a four-man operation. I mean, endangering your career can also endanger the career of the other people you're working with. This is where Ned really plays a key role here, because, well, you know how he kept saying how he loved his wife? He, well, I guess he had a pretty bizarre way of showing it. You and Ariel are so cute together. Is any of it just for show? Yeah, sure. He's telling the truth. On September 24th, 2022, the Try Guys released a video called Try Guys Try Stand Up Comedy, in which it was noticeable that Ned was kind of edited out. Around the same time, a photo was released, allegedly showing Ned kissing another woman who wasn't his wife. It sucked, especially when it came to be revealed that that woman was an employee under the Try Guys company. Evidence kept mounting that something was going on behind the scenes, until September 27th, 2022, when the Try Guys released this. Ned Fulmer is no longer working with the Try Guys. As a result of a thorough internal review, we do not see a path forward together. We thank you for your support as we navigate this change. Soon after, Ned Fulmer confirmed all of this. Family should have always been my priority, but I lost focus and had a consensual workplace relationship. I'm sorry for any pain that my actions may have caused to the guys and the fans, but most of all, to Ario. The only thing that matters right now is my marriage and my children, and that's where I'm going to focus my attention. Damn, that actually... <laughs> That actually sucks. But it gets even more bizarre, as only a couple days later, Ned would be photographed outside of his home with his wife with a big ol' smile on his face. A couple days later, the Try Guys would release a video on their YouTube channel in which they addressed everything that happened. They revealed that not only are they cutting Ned Fulmer from future content, they're changing up thumbnails and even removing him in old videos. Not only that, but the video also shows them just being genuinely upset that a friend of theirs would do this to them, potentially jeopardizing their entire company. I don't know that we'll ever be able to fully articulate the pain we feel at this moment. It's hard to rewatch old videos that we love and are proud of. We're losing a friend, we're losing someone we, we built a company with, we have countless memories with. As for the Try Guys, I'm pretty sure everything will be just fine for them after all this is said and done. I mean, they've been uploading again, they seem fine. They uploaded whatever this is. Faze Banks. Okay, I gotta be honest here, it wasn't until I was researching this when I found out who Faze Banks was and what type of content he made, and personally, I, I don't really care too much for about it, and I don't really have to worry about it because the last time he uploaded was three years ago. So something definitely went down here. I mean, judging from his YouTube, he was relatively successful. Five million subscribers? Not bad at all. Of course, I'm not going to fail to mention that he was one of the founders of the esports organization Faze Clan. A channel that still uploads today to, uh, I guess like mediocre success? I mean, you have one video that has 41k views, but that's not really good if you have 8 million subscribers. Much of the FaZe Clan audience states that the group fell off. Once all the money came in, they let all the fame success get to their heads, and now they're just not as good as they used to be. As for FaZe Banks himself, God, this guy has had so many controversies. I just want to state something I really do not like FaZe Banks' icon. It's just him waving money around while doing the hey go face. It's, it's, this is kind of like one of the worst scenes I've ever seen. So in the road of fame, FaZe Banks started off by playing Call of Duty Black Ops and CSGO. Over time, he founded his organization and was able to collaborate with bigger creators such as Jake Paul, which actually led him down to one of the worst periods of his life, in which he was accused by Jake Paul, who just so happened to be dating Jake's ex-friend, Alyssa Violet, of assaulting Jake's assistant, Meg Zelly. Jake would later go on to state that FaZe was cheating on Alyssa. Jake accused FaZe of also assaulting Meg, leaving a bruise on her neck, to which FaZe denied the allegations. However, he did not outright deny hitting Meg, because he says he was drunk that night, and that he didn't remember doing so, but it was very possible that he did. Wow, what a guy. A member of Team 10 who was there that night, Max Beaumont, would later state he never saw FaZe hurt Meg, nor see FaZe kiss anyone who wasn't his girlfriend. When Meg was asked if she did get hit, she said yes, but it was on accident. It seems as if FaZe may come across as annoying, but not as bad as people say he is. And well, that would be true, until it got worse. Let me just say something real quick before we continue on. This cloud era of YouTube just sucks so bad. Everything about it is just obnoxious and so over the top. Like god, the birth of the diss tracks? Like, I, I just couldn't take it back then and can't take it even now. In November of 2017, Banks and Alyssa Violet went out to get dinner for Thanksgiving. They decided to go eat at the Barley House for a nice Thanksgiving meal. 
The problem was that shit went down at the Barley House. So an argument went down between Alyssa, Banks, and Barley House employees, which led to a big physical altercation that FaZe had claimed was started by Barley House. Eventually, video came out, there was a fight that occurred, but it was not incited by Barley House employees. What led to this fight was Banks entering the restricted basement area in the restaurant, and where he was asked to leave and go upstairs. The FaZe Banks story tells a different tale, with Banks stating that Barley House employees had tried to assault his girlfriend to which FaZe Banks decided to fight back in rage. The Barley House story basically states that Alyssa and FaZe were just upset about being kicked out, leading to this entire thing to be escalated to like this big, big, I don't know, this brawl? Alyssa, who was upset about getting kicked out, got in the faces of other customers who were just trying to leave the restaurant, which led to this giant fight occurring. It, it, it was like this big shit show. Judging from the video, it seems like Barley House is in the right. And if you said this back in 2017, this was met with a bunch of controversy to even side with Barley House. Something that I shouldn't be surprised about is that FaZe Banks has a bunch of hardcore fans. FaZe would later then harass Barley House on social media, saying that they were done for, eventually making a video about the Barley House incident, to which he was not legally able to. He was forced to take down the video and also pay Barley House $150,000. Years later in 2019, Alyssa and FaZe broke up, with Alyssa Violet accusing FaZe of multiple counts of adultery. FaZe would respond to Alyssa's accusations, all the bad things Alyssa had done to him, but that he wouldn't get into it. He then would basically confirm that he did cheat on Alyssa. This guy sucks. This guy just sucks. Uh, subscribe to Zeepster, uh, I'll see you guys later.